multidisciplinary artist based out of Toronto. Uh, multidisciplinary just means I love working with many different mediums and building art out of it. Uh, I started off kind of building these like large installations filled with like lots of different ceramics, uh, mixed media paintings, and as of recently working on different tapestry designs. Um, but it's always been a passion of mine to build zines. So today we're going to build our own zine. And what is a zine you might ask? Well, a zine is a mini magazine and so basically it's a little paper publication where it's like you're able to put whatever thoughts in your head onto paper and so it can be anything from different drawings illustrations poetry written work uh different comic ideas stickers anything you can think of we can put in this little booklet one of the most challenging things about building a zine is finding out where to begin as you can see, the possibilities are endless, so sometimes it's helpful to create a mood board. This will just be a visual grid of different plots, ideas, and characters that you would like to explore within your booklet. This is an example of saddle stitching. It just means that staples are added to the spine of the booklet in order to keep the pages together. It is one of the most traditional and classic styles for creating a zine. These zines are both perfect round. That means that glue has been adhered to the spine of the booklet. This is the most classic style of making a book and it's often used for hardcover and softcover booklets. Finally, there's the one page zine. This is one of my most favorite techniques because it's super simple and only requires one sheet of paper. The possibilities are endless and there's so many different styles and storylines that you can create. Here are some examples that me and my sister drew today. All you need to make your zine is scissors, paper, and optional, a ruler. Um, I brought a whole bunch of different paper that I'm going to make a couple different size zines. And then afterwards, we're going to take these and decorate them. Now we are going to build our booklet. I have a sheet of paper here that is eight and a half by 11. And this is just your standard size of printing paper. So we're going to take the paper and flip it vertically and take the bottom edge and fold it upwards. We're going to try our best to make sure that the corners meet each other. And then you fold it down. You can use a ruler or your fingernail in order to create the flat edge like so. We're going to do another fold, again, taking it from the long end and vertically and flipping it upwards. Again, trying to make sure you match up those corners. We're going to do one more final fold, again, flipping it upwards, like so. The method in which you fold doesn't really matter. The main thing is, is that you want eight sheets in the final version. And then open it up. And you should have eight panels all together. Next, we're going to fold it over and create a line right here. So using my scissors, I'm going to follow the natural crease of what has been created. To the corner. It should start, stop right at the little pin there. We're going to fold it over. And we're going to pinch these two corners together and then you pinch the bottom parts all together. Fold it over and just like that you have your own mini zine. 
There are no rules when it comes to decorating, so feel free to use anything you'd like in order to design the pages of your zine. Here we have pictured different pens. Pencil crayons are great to decorate your zine with. Another option can be paint. And this is how you build your own zine. Take this as an opportunity to explore your own stories. Build the weirdest worlds filled with odd characters of far off lands and try to envision a new future.